A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep, shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has had, he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. Verbum da mini. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. Let Israel wait for the Lord. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Dominus vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. 
Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. Verbum Domini. Laudator Jesus Christus, praise be Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Faustina, St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, born in 1905. She died 33 years later after a life of prayer and holiness. She brought to us a message of divine mercy, which I think beautifully ties in with our readings today, which were not specific to her feast day. But that's the wisdom of Almighty God and Holy Mother Church. They can work these things out. The message of divine mercy is that God's mercy is infinite. God's mercy reaches to all the corners of the earth to all time, to all people. We know well the story of Noah. Today we find him actually going to Nineveh, but as we know in the chapters before, he didn't want to go. He thought Nineveh needed to be flattened like a pancake. Nuke them. They were the enemy of Israel. So he's hoping that God's going to just obliterate them. And yet God's saying, to him, no, you go to Nineveh and you preach to them. And tell them to repent. Repent? No, flatten them. God says, no, you go. What does he do? He doesn't listen. He has no mercy in his heart at the moment. So he runs away, gets on a ship. Terrible storm ensues. The sailors on board figure out it's him. He's the only one that's not getting nervous and doing everything overboard. They figure out it's him, so they throw him overboard. And what happens? A big fish swallows him up. And he's in there for three days. Certainly a foreshadowing of the three days Jesus would be in the belly of the earth. But he gets it now. After Charlie the Tuna spits him on shore, he realizes, I better go. And he goes, and they tell us today, Nineveh is so huge, it takes three days to get through it on foot. And he goes, and I, I can imagine his heart's not really into it, but he's doing it because he doesn't want to go into another fish or maybe some big crab or something. That, who knows what would be waiting for him after this. So he goes, and I can just imagine him. If I was the producer and director of a movie, this is how I would have it done. He's going through down, better repent, better repent. Going to be destroyed. And yet they listen, not because of him, but because they actually have sorrow, contrition. And from the king all the way down, even the animals put on sackcloth and ashes. And of course we see now this is the mercy of God reaching to those who embrace it. As we know, the story of Noah, I mean the story of um, <clears throat> Jonah, it doesn't just end there. He still has a little bit left of him. And he gets a big sunburn on his head because some worm eats the, the plant that's giving him shade. He doesn't get the full picture that God's mercy extended even to those who hated him. But the key here is that they repented. They were sorrowful. Mercy. Mercy does not deny justice, but mercy also embraces true contrition. God doesn't force it down anyone's throat. The gospel today is another example. Martha's busy cooking in the kitchen. I presume she was the older of the two. I don't know, maybe because I'm the oldest of my mother's children. 
usually when you have siblings, the oldest ones always complaining about the youngest ones. Mommy's favorite. So she's sitting and she's in the kitchen cooking up a storm, and there's Mary listening to Jesus. Now, how does Martha handle this? Does she just whisper or say out loud, Mary, could you come and help me? No. She says, Lord, tell my sister to come and help me. Sort of an order, a command. And Jesus tells her, Martha, Martha, you worry about too much. Mary's chosen the better portion. It wasn't that he didn't care that dinner wasn't going to be cooked. That's why he went there. She must have been a pretty good cook. Yet, instead of having mercy and going to her sister first and in love and mercy, say, could you please help me? No. Or going to Jesus and saying, Lord, I need some help. Or do you mind if Mary comes and helps me? No. She's got a little attitude, hubris, and says, Lord, you tell my sister to come and help me. Again, there's not a lot of mercy floating around in her. And Jesus challenges her to embrace mercy. One of the other great examples was when St. John Paul the Great, after he was shot, almost killed, went to the prison and forgave the man who pulled the trigger. He was sorrowful. He was contrite. I'll never forget seeing that scene on the news of him embracing that man, forgiving him. Or like the story of St. Maria Goretti, she was stabbed over a dozen times by Alessandro, her killer. She forgave him before she died, and her mother, after he came out of prison, after 20 years of hard labor, went to her, Mrs. Goretti, I'm so sorry for what I did to your daughter. And that beautiful woman said, Alessandro, if Almighty God and my daughter can forgive you, so can I. That's mercy. It's not stupidity, though. It doesn't mean that you leave your car and your house open, unlocked, saying, well, you know, God will provide. He gave us intellect. He also gave us a will. He gave us prudence. He also gave us mercy. Mercy is when you take people at their word. If they say, I'm sorry, you accept it. Well, what if this was a third time, Father? What did Jesus say about counting? Was it not Peter who said, Lord, how many times must I forgive? And he thought he's going to give him a good one. Not three strikes and you're out, but how about seven times? So Peter really thought he's in a good zone there, right? And what does Jesus say? No, not seven times. Seventy times seven times. Which is a Hebrew way of saying, you can't count that high. This isn't a commentary on Peter's IQ. It was a way of speaking. So how many times must we forgive? As many times as it happens. And we must have harbor in our hearts such disdain and hatred for those who are in need of mercy and forgiveness. There's that beautiful movie, The Scarlet and the Black. It's about Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty, who worked at the Holy Office during World War II. And there was this, this Nazi officer who was terrible rounding up the Jews in Rome after the war was over and this man was in prison, who visited him? Monsignor O'Flaherty. He visited him every day and even brought him into the church, received him into the sacraments because he was truly sorry. He had a lot of sins on his soul, but so do we. This is why God's mercy extends to us in that beautiful sacrament we call penance, confession. And thanks be to God, I as a priest don't have to punch your card and say, oh, you're, you're all done. You get that at the donut shop, they punch it after so many times, you know, you're done now. You get one free donut, you can go home. But as a priest, I must forgive in the name of Christ, in the person of Christ, no matter how many times a person comes to confession. Now, it's true, some people can play a game and pretend, say they're sorry and they're not really sorry. That's for God to figure out and decide what to do. But you and me, we are challenged 
And as St. Faustina would tell us, we must ask for mercy, be merciful, and be confident and trust in God's mercy. Doesn't mean to be a cynic. And we live in a world today where cynicism is rampant, and so is nastiness. Go on social media and the horrible things you see people say. But even not on social media, even within our own groupings. I've heard this from clergy and laity, from seminarians, from the faithful. Our opinions are opinions. We should be more concerned about truth, the truth that God has revealed to us that is embraced and protected by Holy Mother Church, and the desire for mercy. It's mercy that I desire, God tells us in Scripture. Mercy, again, is not looking the other way and giving a nod and a wink when someone's doing evil. Mercy means that we point out their errors in a loving way. Jesus says, this is how you are to correct. Go to the person discreetly. Don't go on social media and blast everybody and say, look what they're doing, but to go to them discreetly. If that doesn't work, then you bring one or more. If that doesn't work, then you bring it to Holy Mother Church. And if that doesn't work, then leave it up to God. But you and I need to cultivate mercy. See, Faustina died at a very young age, just like St. Therese, the little flower, did. But she gave a beautiful witness and testimony in her devotion to God's mercy. And those two rays emanating from Jesus' sacred heart, the white light of baptism, the red, or the red of his sacred blood, that's the source of mercy in God, that he would die for us, shed his blood for us, and that he would also wash away our sins in baptism. St. Faustina, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.